Hello everyone. I hope you're all having a great day. Um, I've been working or have been working on uh, making some changes to Lincoln Yard. Uh, so what I wanted to do is put a, I, I videoed everything as I was doing it so I can show you how I went about making the changes and moving this engine servicing facility tracks over to the front of the layout. And uh, that helps because during my operating sessions, I have a hard time. There's always engines sitting in a track where I need to access cars. So now I'm able to s store six engine engines in this track on these tracks. And it makes, uh, hopefully it's gonna make it a lot easier to run this. So what I've done in the video is I've shown you the track tools that I use, uh, the procedures that I use, the, all the materials, all the track, how I did things, rail joiners, all kinds of stuff. So. And then at the end, I show you the kind of the final result without the track being ballasted. So with all that being said, uh, here comes the video of how I did everything. I wanted to show you all, uh, I have a track laying toolbox uh, that I use uh, with all my tools in it. Um, here's a pair of uh, needle nose pliers that I've actually, I don't know if you can see it or not. I don't know if I can zoom in on it, but it has a notch cut in it. So the nails fit in there so that comes in handy uh, i also have you know a pin vise an exacto knife and a pencil for marking nails these come in handy here from atlas when you're doing flex track you cut off the last four ties and then slide this in a piece on, a, on in place of those ties and then one on the other side and it gives you room here for your rail joiner so it works out really well <clears throat> when you're hand laying or putting flex track down. Uh, here you can see uh, track gauges. The ones with the notches are actually soldering when you're soldering the rail uh, or soldering rail together. Uh, that kind of protects everything else and uh, keeps the soldering arm where it needs to be. The other two are parallel track tools, which I kind of showed you uh, in the video or will show you in the videos. And also there's a couple of NMRA track gauges under there, which come in really handy for a lot of different things. Um, there's one for track gauges, there's uh, points, there's flanges, there's all kinds of stuff on here. Plus it's a clearance guide. So it uh, works out really well. I, I recommend you get one of those. They're not all that expensive either, which is nice. Uh, rail joiners, more ties. More rail joiners, that kind of stuff. Also, uh, I have that triangular level, which works out well. You'll see that in the videos. Uh, more rail joiners. I use code 80 rail joiners, N scale code 80 rail joiners on code 83 and code 70 track. They fit much tighter uh, and they're not nearly as big as the HA ones, so they don't, or the code 183, I should say. Uh, 183 that are much bigger and I would highly recommend getting a Zuron track cutter they are really really handy just do not cut any hard wire with them it's okay for rail and things like that but you can kind of ruin them and they will wear out after a while but they're very nice uh, and once again maybe in the $20 range or so so uh, there's the kind of stuff that I use for for doing the uh, track laying so um, here we go, I'll, I'll, I'll start the procedures of how I do this now. Okay, here we are on May 24th. I finally got all the parts and the cork and everything I needed to relocate some of the tracks in York, or in Lincoln Yard. Um, so as right here, I've uh, taken a piece of flex. Uh, this is where I'm gonna tie the one track in. And I've used T-pins to hold it in place and then I'll mark the outside of the rail for the cork roadbed that I need to put in. And then that'll come around here and tie in to what was the caboose lead at one point. So, uh, <laughs> unfortunately I used code 83 on the main lines and 70 here, but I might just uh, back that track down to code 70. Really doesn't matter. I have enough of uh, code 70 to do that with. I uh, don't have enough code 83. So there we go. So also, uh, I decided that uh, this track over here where the cabooses are just the track closest to me, right there, is going to shift over to be two and a quarter inches from that track. 
So I was able to, luckily, I was able to use my spatula, and we're straight edge here, scraper, and this was not glued down very well, so it literally came up very, very easily, so, um, which is a godsend. And right there, right here, is where I'll be tying back in. So this track here will come out just a little bit farther. So uh, I'm going to be working on that there, and then uh, as we get that done, uh, I'll actually take this track out uh, and replace it with code 70, this track also. Uh, this That's now going to be the uh, engine lead, one of the two engine leads. So uh, here we are at this point. Um, I'm going to shut it down for now, do some work, and then I'll come back and uh, show you a little bit of an update of where I am. All right. Also, this is, I, I actually glue my cork red bed and the track down on the cork by using this clear DAP all-purpose acrylic latex caulk plus silicone. Works out really well. Now, I sort of have my line drawn here. So what I'm going to do is just put some glue in down here. If I could do this while I'm filming at the same time. Just put a bead down. Had to fit this underneath down here a little bit. But then what I do is I take the spatula or this and just spread this out underneath. Just a thin layer of work. I think I'm going to have to take that screw out. It's going to cause an issue if I don't. So, um, so anyway. That's part another portion of what I do. There's another screw there I need to move. So I just spread this out. And luckily, I found that I can just move that track over. Cork and all. So that's pretty cool. Anyway, back in a minute. As you can see, I have my parallel track gauge here. I have the glue down. I just can move this along here. Try and keep whoops. Tracks parallel. Keep that in here and see it's moving over a little bit here it's uh, not wanting to curve on me real well so anyway um, I'm just going to run this down here to keep the tracks parallel just my t-pins here to get down here there was a, a, a track feeder there that I got to redo. Anyway, gives you an idea. Best ways to play the track is that way. I got some work down to do the other end, but uh, be back in a few more minutes. So I periodically uh, go along the track, checking that angle with the bubble. Uh, and then I, where I need to, I put those T-pens angled in. Now, I have an advantage in that I have homosote down, so it's easy to push these pins in. Otherwise, you'd have to be uh, using shims. Now, I did have to use a shim back here. I don't know if I can see it. Um, right in here. There it is. You can see the little bit of a paper shim underneath because there was a joint in the uh, homosote there that didn't match up. So, anyway, you can see all the angled T-pins, which has been a, you know, blessing the homeless boat. has been a blessing on that upper deck. Uh, I have foam, so it'll work up there too. So not quite as well, but it works. So anyway, you can see the parallel track gauge. Hopefully my alignment looks good there. Looks good on video, so hopefully we're, we're good to go. Anyway, that's one track in. I'm going to cut some road bed and get the other track moved over. So now I'll put this cork in. Uh, I should note that <clears throat> if you have some undulations like right here, there's a joint. And they're actually fairly, it's a fairly big joint between the two homosote pieces. I just let the cork float in there. Um, so in a couple of <laughs> I just had to take a piece of this uh, DP Models products and fold it over and build a little ramp there for it to uh, pick up the distance, you know, the, the difference right there more gradually, so that should work for yard. 
so I had to let this dry. The other thing I, I should have mentioned before was also, it's probably a good idea to turn off your DCC system while you're doing this. Uh, more than likely, it won't hurt everything. I do have some uh, NCE EB1s that'll, you know, shut their layout down if there's a, uh, in any one of the districts that there's a short, but it doesn't hurt just to shut it down and you really don't need it on anyway. So anyway, just something to mention. Um, going to start taking up some more of these tracks and, and moving them around a little bit. Uh, I need to let this cork dry before I can go any farther on that track. So here's where we are now. For those of you who are wondering, um, the when you pull cork the road up with the cord row bed, when you pull the track off the cork, you can see that it doesn't any do any damage to the track. Uh, here's a piece of Atlas Code 83 that I've pulled the cork off of. There's no damage whatsoever. Uh, you can see on this side, everything's fine. So, um, so don't hesitate to, uh, you know, to pull the cork off and, and reuse the track. So, uh, just give you a heads up. All right, thanks. A little change in my uh, track plan, which I wasn't worried. I thought I bought a number five Pico. Um, I can't find it. So I did find a number six, uh, which threw some of the geometry off a little bit. So I had to change the track plan in here just slightly. These would be the two engine servicing tracks. A little get cut back to somewhere about where the exacto knife is. And then that's the caboose and maintenance away track right there. And the track in the background is to lead into Agways and, uh, well, Agways in the lumber yard over here. So it comes on around uh, and goes underneath the, my toolbox there. So anyway, it ends just a little bit farther up. So uh, not a big change. Uh, what's going to hold me up just slightly is uh, I need to extend the fascia out a little bit. Uh, as you can see, I have some blocks in there to kind of give me an idea how far out. Not a big deal. Uh, I can get that done shortly, but uh, I probably won't get that back, back to this until next Monday. Uh, I work the next three days at White Rose. Um, and right now, I'm having some arthritis in the knee, so my knee's saying it's time to sit down. So anyway, uh, hopefully uh, I'll, I'll get back to you. Well, the, the next part of this video, obviously, will be sometime next week. So I should be able to finish it up maybe on Monday. Um, and uh, we'll go from there. And, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll video some more about what I'm doing and how things are going. So um, I'll be back shortly. Bye. So what I managed to do was you saw the blocks that were in this place before. So I found a piece of homosote and I was able to cut it down to kind of fit in there wasn't the exact height so then there were some gaps so then it came back and I filled it with sculpt -a mold so um, I had to as I'm turning here uh, make sure it was level for the track here because there was a, there was a difference in the height of the home so it's right there so and we got that uh, tied it into the fascia so you know a little bit of clean up there and uh, you know once a once the sculpt mold dries, I can go ahead and, uh, you know, give it a paint, give it a little bit of paint, and then I can start putting the track in. So right now that's looking like a couple days off because uh, I got to work the next day, uh, actually tomorrow, and I'm off Friday and I'm working Saturday. So anyway, uh, I'll bring you up to date when I get the track in. Thank you. Well, I finally have all the tracks in. And uh, you can see I actually have the caboose in there where they belong. And um, cabooses, whatever you want to say. Uh, I don't think there is a good plural for it. Anyway, these uh, in the back there, you can see the Agway track, which actually worked out better because uh, before I had a curve where the boxcars sat. Now it's, it's uh, relatively straight, so it makes more sense that way. Um, Anyway, still uh, gluing down some stuff, still being held down. Um, and uh, so anyway, kind of there's, uh, there's pretty much the finished product. 
Uh, actually, I can move Agwis back a little bit. You can see where I had the building sketched out. So, you know, I can move it back a little bit. So that's good. Um, anyway, a couple good things happened from this. Not 100% sure that I'm happy with it is, the way it is. Um, but, you know, I, I can get the six engines, which solves a whole lot of operation problems. So anyway, uh, and I did cut out cut a little bit of cork away and cut back the track for what is now going to be superior gas back there. Otis is superior gas. So anyway, uh, so it makes a little bit more sense and I like it. And we're going to come around this way. And I had mentioned before that I was going to add a cut over here, what appears to be a cut. Why well, I got some of the Woodland Scenics precast uh, and started to put them in, but they're, they're leaning back too far. So uh, I was just trying to do the easy way and not cut that uh, base back there a little bit. <laughs> so I'll have to go back and, and correct that. So anyway, uh, here's where we are right now. Uh, I will come back in a little bit once I have all of the T-pins out and everything uh, so that you can see what the, what the well, it won't be the finished product because it won't be ballasted. But anyway, uh, I'll give you an idea of, uh, you know, how everything looks without the T-pins in it. So... See you in a bit. So here's the completed track work. I got everything in. The T-pins are all off. Um, you can see the, the track right in here. This is the Agway track. Uh, arrival departure track. So there's the yard tracks back there. Um, I got to wire it up today. It's my plan. Uh, and there's the... Uh, this is a caboose, a maintenance away track. Uh, the two service engine servicing facilities and far enough off the edge of the layout that if they fall over they're not going to hit the floor so um actually turned out really well uh, a lot better than uh, i actually thought especially having to use that number six switch but um and actually the six worked out better uh when i, I, I kind of found a looked at a five and it, it would have changed the uh, geometry even more and uh, this way it actually works out much better. So um, there completes the changes to Lincoln Yard and the engine servicing facility. So um, I'll uh, go back to or give you some videos about how I'm doing the uh, cut over in Spring Grove, uh, you know, in the future. So take care everyone. Have a great summer if I don't see you in between. Bye.